All right, welcome to Build Reports tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create a fractal in Filter Forge using the new loop component. Uh, this fractal right here is the one that we are going to create. And over here, as you see, I started on the fractal. Uh, what this one consists of is a square that is inclined and it repeats itself over and over again as you can see and represented by the blue in this example here on the Wikipedia <coughs> on this filter I've actually already finished it just so you can see a demonstration of it uh, this is at one iteration at two we have started the shape that looks like the example we got the middle shape and then one at each corner of the square. So now if we keep going a little more and adding more iterations, this is at five. And if we look at the example on the Wikipedia site, you can see that it is the same and filter forage. So now that you see what it does, you can actually go a couple more iterations. On this particular one, it doesn't look so good after eight. But for now, we'll just uh, I'll show you how to build this one. If you're familiar with Filter Forge, this one should be rather simple. You can just uh, create a new filter. I'm actually going to edit this one since I've already finished it. I'll show you how to put it together. From all the components, you can see that it's relatively a simple creation and simple to construct from the loop component since that does all the heavy lifting of the repeating pattern. Uh, first we'll start by making our square and that we'll use a profile gradient, a step curve, another profile gradient, and then a linear curve. If you're familiar with editing and the filter editor, then that would be helpful. Alright, first we'll start with a linear curve. You can drag that onto your workspace. And you can set the settings as shown here. Start is 1, end is 100, minimum is 0, maximum is 100. And profile gradient. You can leave the colors at the default. Uh, offset is at zero. Rotate is 180 degrees. Mirror is selected. You want to attach that to the step curve. And all those settings are at zero. Uh, step curve, you want to attach that to uh, the other profile gradient. And that one is at 270 degrees and it is mirrored. Now, when you first connect this profile gradient, 
going to be at zero and look something like this. But we actually want to put that at 50. So this is the square is centered. And that's it for the square. So now you want to add a loop component. And you want to click on the Add Accumulated. Once you do that, the accumulated will show up right over here. And we actually can't see anything at the moment because we only have the iterations at one. So you can actually either connect your inch slider control or you can just simply move this around to maybe like three or four or something like that. That should be good for the moment. Then unaccumulated your preview. You can set that to wherever you want so you can see what's going on. So you can actually see the feedback from the loop once we get there. Now attached to this accumulated component is the lookup component. Now we're going to be taking the square and we're going to be multiplying it. So we're going to have a copy of the square right next to each other. And this is one of the efficient ways of multiplying something. Uh, so you want to grab the lookup component. You want to save that at, or the anchor you want to default size. And then you're going to have two profile gradients. One connected to the lookup X and then one that controls the Y. The first gradient, you want that at zero degrees, and the repeat is at three. The second profile gradient, you want at 90 degrees, and again at three is the repeat. So that way, instead of seeing just this, I actually see three instances across and down. So that's pretty much what this little section does. You can use also use the scale and the offset but sometimes I just find it quicker on the lookup and there's not not much artifacts that you get from the lookup component. So once you get this far we're going to add a blend component and we're going to have the opacity at 100 and the mode is going to be multiple. Now you go ahead and connect the square and profile gradient to the background of the blend in here. Now the lookup component is going to be connected to the foreground. Then you could connect the blend to the accumulator on the loop component. Now you should see something like that. not you can choose your iterations you could move those to three or two or whatever one will just bring you the square again so you could actually connect an its slider controller to that
and it actually uses that. And here you can choose your max value, which you can put 8, since, as I said before, it doesn't look that good past 8. So now once you get this far, you can play with it however you want. Use it for however you want. But some other cool things that you can do with this is you can get different variations on the same type of fractal. For instance, you can take the profile gradient, you can move it back to zero in the offset, and you can watch this fractal becomes now a different variation. You take that, you take this first profile gradient, We can rotate it. We'll take that one 270. Take this one, rotate it to 180. So you get the nice triangle. And you just get some more interesting uh, fractals here. Now you can even take profile gradients on the lookup component and change those, the repeats on those. Get some more interesting type of fractals. But it's up to you what you want to do. Get a lot of cool stuff just by this. Uh, just by this method alone. And by the loop component, you get a lot of look crazy looking cool stuff. Oh, that's it for this one.